What's up everyone and welcome back to Movie Race. With its rich tapestry of references and mysteries, Wednesday has captivated fans of the Addams Family. As we delve deeper into this world, what other surprises await? And which Adams family members will emerge? The enigmatic allure continues, leaving us eager to uncover the show's dark and delightful secrets. Number 10. Raining Blood During the Raven Dance at Nevermore Academy, a group of normies who are regular people play a prank on the school. Pugsley, you're soft and weak. You'll never survive without me. I give you two months, tops. They connect a water truck filled with red paint to the sprinkler system, drenching the mostly white-clad Nevermore students with red paint. Surprisingly, Wednesday remains unruffled by the incident and is actually disappointed to discover it's only paint as she had hoped for pig's blood. This prank harkens back to a performance that Wednesday and Pugsley staged for their elementary school talent show, during which they pretended to bleed on the audience from wounds they faked. The Pig's Blood's reference is reminiscent of Stephen King's novel Carrie, where the bullies pour pig's blood on the main character just after she is crowned prom queen. Number 9. Wednesday's Penchant for Getting Stabbed In the concluding episode of the Netflix series, Wednesday endures multiple injuries. Initially, she is stabbed as a consequence of her ancestor Goody Adams' deeds. Subsequently, she willingly shields one of her friends by taking an arrow. It's noteworthy that she has consistently had a fascination with pain and has often expressed her enjoyment of experiences like being electrocuted. In the film, a young Wednesday orchestrates a pretend stabbing with Pugsley while their Uncle Fester observes their play. Although this doesn't involve real harm, a young Wednesday has never declined an opportunity to enact a scenario where she feigns death. Number 8. The Addams Family Theme Song Fans of the Addams Family will surely recognize their iconic theme song, complete with Thing's distinctive snap. Although this theme song doesn't make an appearance in Netflix's Wednesday, it is alluded to multiple times. During a conversation with one of her two love interests, Tyler, he describes her as kind of kooky, to which Wednesday responds by saying she prefers to be spooky. This is a clever nod to the theme song's lyrics, they're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious, and spooky. The snap serves as a method by which students gain access to the secret lair of the Nightshades, a clandestine society within the school that Wednesday declines to join. In this context, we witness both Wednesday and Marilyn Thornhill performing the iconic snap. Number 7. Fires Everywhere in her pursuit of vengeance against the pilgrims who brutally killed her ancestors, Wednesday decides that it's only just to set fire to the statue erected in their honor with a little assistance from Thing. However, staying true to her Wednesday-esque demeanor, while everyone else panics and flees, Wednesday maintains her composure, adding a touch of drama to the moment by playing her cello. This fiery act recalls a scene from Adam's family values when Wednesday and her fellow misfits take control of the play at Camp Chippewa and set everything ablaze. While chaos ensues around her, Wednesday wears the smallest of smiles, content to have achieved her revenge. Number 6. Despite her impressive cello performances, Ortega had never touched the instrument before. While Ortega impressed the audience with her cello performances, she revealed in her interview with Wired that she had no previous experience playing the instrument. Instead, Ortega decided to learn the cello and started taking lessons approximately two months before the filming commenced. I might not be able to play as proficiently now because I've been away from home due to work, but it's something I intend to keep exploring, Ortega commented. I hold great admiration for anyone who plays the cello. I find it to be a truly charming instrument. Number 5. The Weather Vanes and a Tim Burton-themed mouse The Weather Vanes Cafe is a popular spot for both Nevermore students and the local Jericho townsfolk. And interestingly, one of Wednesday's love interests, Tyler, works there as a barista. In an interview with Variety, production designer Mark Scruton disclosed that the coffee shop's interior conceals some hidden Tim Burton references. 
Sharp-eyed viewers might notice metal weather vanes affixed to the cafe's wall in the background of certain scenes. These weather vanes crafted by Scutton features nods to Tim Burton's other films, including A Headless Horseman from Sleepy Hollow and Willy Wonka's iconic bowler hat. Additionally, Uriah's Heap, an antique shop in Jericho, sells deceased stuffed mice dressed in quirky outfits that pay homage to various characters from past Tim Burton movies. Number 4. Two Snaps and an Iconic Cameo For devoted fans of the original Addams Family, the allusion to the famous Two Snaps code is unmistakable. It's the signal Wednesday employs to gain access to the Nightshade's hideout beneath the Raven. Later in the episode, we witness Miss Thornhill, a normie teacher, employing the same finger-snapping code for entry. What's intriguing is that Miss Thornhill is portrayed by Christina Ritchie, who portrayed Wednesday in both the 1991 The Addams Family and its 1993 sequel Addams Family Values. The two snaps reference harks back to the iconic theme tune, which featured finger snapping in the original TV series and has been incorporated in some form in every subsequent remake. Number 3. Pilgrim World There is a significant backstory involving Wednesday Addams and her aversion to anything associated with the pilgrims and colonialism. In the new Netflix series, Wednesday is compelled to peddle fudge at the Pilgrim World Amusement Park, which happens to be owned by the town's mayor. During this stint, she enlightens a busload of German tourists about the genuine history of the pilgrims and their cruelty, shedding light on their dark past. Subsequently, she delves into the history of Jericho's founder, Joseph Crackstone, revealing his true character. The presence of the Pilgrim World theme park is yet another homage to Adam's family values, where Wednesday and her brother Pugsley are sent to Camp Chippewa, a place they despise, especially the Pilgrim festivities. In a climactic act of rebellion, Wednesday ultimately sets the camp ablaze while the jubilant campers are engrossed in their Thanksgiving play. Number 2. Edgar Allan Poe is referenced everywhere the series is steeped in Edgar Allan Poe's influence as a fictional alumnus of Nevermore Academy. Apart from the school's name itself, which is a homage to Poe's The Raven, where a man is tormented by a talking raven repeatedly uttering Nevermore, there is a profusion of allusions to Poe's literary works. Within the series, Wednesday experiences a significant and foreboding vision involving ravens. Principal Weems prominently displays a preserved raven on her desk, and the Poe Cup is a rich tapestry of Poe's literary knowledge. Furthermore, even the team boats in the race pay tribute to Poe's short stories with their names and designs. Enid and Wednesday's boat bears the moniker the Black Cat. Bianca's boat references the gold bug. Xavier's boat is fittingly titled the Amontillado, inspired by the cask of Amontillado and the fourth boat is denominated The Pit and the Pendulum. Number 1. There are references to Tim Burton's movies hidden in the set design. During discussions with Variety and Netflix's Tadum, Mark Scrutton, the production designer for Wednesday, unveiled the presence of concealed references within the show's set designs, particularly within the normie town of Jericho. Scrutton explained, In the town of Jericho, a lot of the shop fronts were taken directly from the Chaz Adams cartoons. These included various businesses like a florist's shop, a cobbler shop, a thrift store, all paying homage to the original Adams Family cartoons. Additionally, subtle nods were incorporated into the series, such as the surnames of the showrunners, Miles Miller and Alfred Goh appearing on the window of Wednesday's therapist's office. Furthermore, there are covert references to the films of Tim Burton, the creator of the Wednesday series. For instance, at the Weathervanes coffee shop where Tyler is employed, metal Weathervanes adorn the wall. Upon close inspection, viewers can spot designs like the Headless Horseman from Burton's Sleepy Hollow and Willy Wonka's iconic top hat. In the taxidermy shop Uriah's Heap, Scruton revealed the presence of several mice, each of which references Burton's films. One more Burton-inspired Easter egg can be found within the revered halls of Nevermore Academy, specifically in Principal Weems' office, a shrunken head as a nod to the 1988 film Beetlejuice. 
This marks the end of this video. If you enjoy the video, make sure that you like and share it. Let us know your opinions in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you at the next one.